The world's most isolated communities are remarkable examples of human resilience and adaptability, thriving in the most remote corners of our planet. From high-altitude villages perched on mountain peaks to tiny islands scattered across vast oceans, join me as I count down the top 15 most isolated communities in the world. Starting with number 15, Palmerton Island. Nestled in the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean, approximately 3,200 kilometers northeast of New Zealand, lies the diminutive island of Palmerston. With a population of just 62 individuals all hailing from the same bloodline, Palmerston is one of the most secluded communities on Earth. Captain James Cook is credited with the discovery of Palmerston Island during his explorations in 1774. It wasn't until his third voyage, however, that Cook set foot on the island in April of 1777 christening it Palmerston in honor of Henry Temple, 2nd Viscount Palmerston, Lord of the Admiralty. The genesis of its inhabitants traces back to a single individual, William Marsters, arriving on the island in 1863 with his Polynesian wife and her two cousins. Marsters became its inaugural permanent resident. Granted possession of the island by Queen Victoria, Marsters took his wife's cousin as additional spouses, eventually fathering 23 children. Before his passing in 1899, Marsters divided the island into thirds, bequeathing each segment to one of his wives. Today, nearly all of Palmerston's inhabitants are direct descendants of William Marsters. Life on Palmerston is characterized by solitude and simplicity. It's devoid of shops, banks, or markets. The islanders rely on trade amongst themselves for necessities. Rainwater serves as their primary water source collected for drinking purposes, while electricity is limited to a mere six hours per day. Despite these challenges, the Islanders have built a telephone station to facilitate communication with the outside world. Number 14, Supai Village, Arizona. Within the depths of the Grand Canyon, away from the bustling tourist crowds, lies the secluded village of Supai. Tucked away in Havasu Canyon, this remote settlement is home to the Havasupai tribe, whose lineage traces back over 800 years. The Havasupai, aptly named the People of the Blue-Green Waters, have carved out life in this arid landscape. Their survival hinges on the waterfalls and springs that not only lend the village its name, but also serve as its lifeblood. Protected as a reservation, Supai's history mirrors the tragic tale of many Native American tribes. In the 1800s, as the United States government encroached upon native lands, the Havasupai saw their territory drastically reduced from over 1.6 million acres to a mere 518, confining them to their current secluded patch of land. The isolation of the Supai village is palpable. Its 208 residents are the sole recipients of mail and parcels delivered by mule, a tradition preserved through generations. Despite its seclusion, though, Supai welcomes intrepid visitors drawn to its natural splendor. However, reaching the village demands grit and determination. It's situated nearly 35 miles from the Grand Canyon's tourist hub. It also lacks paved roads, so the journey commences on a hilltop from where people must traverse eight miles on foot, mule, or helicopter to descend into the canyon's depths. Number 13, Midog, Tibet. Tibet's Motuo County's Midog is a bastion of remoteness enclosed by towering mountains. Accessible only through a precarious road, open for a mere eight months annually due to heavy snowfall, Midog embodies extreme isolation. With a population exceeding 10,000, the city has breathtaking landscapes, yet it grapples with challenges stemming from its seclusion, notably in healthcare and education. Despite its difficulties, though, it has seen improvement in recent years. The construction of a road, though seasonal, replaced perilous mountain passages as the primary means of access. Additionally, burgeoning tourism prompted enhancements in accommodation and even internet access, benefiting both visitors and locals. Frank Kingdon Ward, in his 1925 work Riddle of the Sango Gorges, and Victor Chan, in his 1994 Tibet Handbook, shed light on the region's formidable terrain. Ian Baker's modern expedition, chronicled in his 1994 book The Heart of the World, further illuminated its remote allure. Occupying a land area of over 31,000 square kilometers, or about 12,000 square miles, it lies at the lower reaches of the Yarlung Zangbo River, ensconced by the Himalayas. Its climate also exhibits significant variability, with annual sunshine hours averaging approximately 1,500, and temperatures ranging from about 53 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Abundant precipitation, though, averaging approximately 78 to 196 inches annually, sustains diverse flora and fauna, including species under national protection. 
Number 12. Utkiavik, Alaska Utkiavik in Alaska is one of the most remote cities not only in the 49th state of the U.S., but in the world. This is the northernmost community in the United States, and it's known for its remote position. The city's got a population of about 4,500 indigenous people, but it does get a small share of tourists and other visitors, too. The city and surrounding area are known for its weather and low temperatures, and are just 1,300 miles from the North Pole, making it one of the coldest and most remote cities on the planet. This is an important thing to keep in mind if you wish to visit Utkiavik, because you're gonna want to get in there by the warmer months. However, it is interesting that temperatures here are not as bad as one may think. People still live here after all. The surrounding terrain actually makes the city a bit warmer than the larger area which it's located. The city is surrounded by the Arctic Ocean on three sides, while a flat tundra is located on the fourth. This means that there are no valleys where cold air could settle, which results in a bit higher temperature here. But with that said, there's no need to really ever own a bathing suit here either. Number 11. Funafuti Funafuti is an atoll and the capital on the island nation of Tuvalu. As of the 2017 census, it's got a population of just 6,320 people, meaning it's got more people than the rest of Tuvalu combined, with approximately 60% of the population living there. It consists of a narrow sweep of land between 66 and 1,300 feet wide, encircling large Tenamo Lagoon, 11 miles long and 9 miles wide. The average depth of the lagoon here is about 120 feet, making diving pretty good. With a surface area of just over 6.2 square miles, it is by far the largest lagoon in Tuvalu, and maybe that's why so many locals choose to live here. The land area on the 33 islets around the atoll, Funafuti, comes in at just under one square mile, so when taken together, they constitute less than 1% of its total area. Cargo ships can enter the lagoon and dock at the port facilities on Fongofale. If you look at the map, Tuvalu looks just like it's sort of floating in the middle of nowhere. The nearest population landmass is Fiji. It's just over 700 miles away, which is pretty remote as well. To get to any major city from Funafuti, you would have to fly to either New Zealand or Hawaii, which is probably why it receives only 350 tourists a year, or less than one every day. Number 10. La Rinconada, Peru Approximately 16,000 feet above sea level, the town of La Rinconada claims the title of the highest permanent settlement globally. Despite its lofty elevation, this Peruvian town lacks basic amenities like running water, sewage systems, and proper waste disposal. Yet in the thin air, 50,000 residents endure the harsh conditions in pursuit of one precious resource, gold. Located in southeastern Peru around 400 miles from the Bolivian border, La Rinconada sits precariously on the slopes of Mount Anea, beneath the towering La Bella Dormiente Glacier, or Sleeping Beauty. Originally established as a temporary mining camp over four decades ago, the town never really received permanent city services due to its transient nature. But despite the adversities, the population surge in the 2000s coinciding with a spike in gold prices, between 2000 and 2009, the town's population reportedly soared by 230%. Well, electricity finally arrived in the 2000s, marking a modest improvement in your conditions, but waste management remains primitive, with residents resorting to burning or burying trash outside city limits. Beyond the gold prospectors, though, the city draws attention of researchers fascinated by the physiological effects of oxygen deprivation on humans. With each breath containing only half the oxygen found at sea level, residents endure chronic mountain sickness, characterized by symptoms ranging from dizziness to heart failure. It's estimated that one in four individuals in La Rinconada suffer from CMS, making the town a unique laboratory for studying human adaptation to extreme altitudes. But here's the kicker, the town lacks plumbing and sanitation systems, leading to widespread pollution from plastics and other types of trash due to the absence of services. Hypoxia caused by the low air pressure at such high altitudes is a significant health concern, with researchers estimating that at least 25% of residents suffer from this condition. Moreover, there's a considerable contamination by mercury resulting from the mining practices. Local miners refine ore by grinding and treating it with mercury, then pressing the mass through cloth to filter it. The resulting amalgam is heated to remove the mercury, and with only one small clinic in town, healthcare access is limited. Number 9. Megingo Island Megingo Island is a tiny but fiercely contested landmass. It floats in the expansive waters of Lake Victoria in East Africa. This small, rocky outcrop, measuring less than half an acre in size, has captured the world's attention due to its disputed ownership. 
The story of the island is a tale of territorial ambiguity. It's situated in Lake Victoria. This rocky speck has been claimed by both Kenya and Uganda, leading to a long-standing sovereignty dispute. Its strategic location in a region rich with fish has only intensified the contest for ownership, with both nations seeking to control the valuable fishing grounds around the island. What makes the island truly unique, however, is not its disputed status, but its unparalleled population density. Despite the minuscule size, it's home to over 500 people, and the density is estimated to exceed 250,000 people per square mile. These inhabitants are primarily fishermen and their families, but this staggering density rivals some of the most populous urban areas in the world, such as Manhattan. So while the island may not be home to many people, it doesn't offer much space either. One can only imagine what life is like in this highly contested yet tiny piece of land. On top of it all, the intense competition for fish in the surrounding waters has raised environmental concerns. Overfishing and unsustainable practices threaten the delicate ecosystem of Lake Victoria. Living here on the island isn't easy, and thriving here is even more difficult. So it seems like both the island and the people have been lost to time, existing in a small world where, yeah, everyone knows everyone. But it probably makes for some hot gossip, though. Number 8. Cooper Pedy, Australia In the heart of South Australia lies Cooper Pedy, proudly dubbed the opal mining capital of the world. Despite its aboriginal namesake, meaning the boy's waterhole, locals humorously jest that it translates to white man in a hole. Since its inception in 1916, miners have flocked to Cooper Pedy following the opal discovery, seeking fortune amidst the unforgiving landscape. The heat prompted ingenious solutions here, with many opting to carve out subterranean dwellings from old mines or purpose-dug caverns. Today, much of the town thrives underground, having an array of public buildings including churches, a bookstore, art galleries, bars, and hotels, where opals gleam from the walls. Life in Cooper Pedy exists against a backdrop of stark desolation. The town's first quote-unquote tree, fashioned from scrap iron, still stands sentinel over the arid expanse. Sweltering summer temperatures force residents to embrace nocturnal pursuits, with nighttime golf with luminous balls becoming a beloved pastime. Cooper Pedy's cinematic allure has graced the silver screen in films like Pitch Black, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and Red Planet. And it shouldn't really be hard to see why the entire place looks like a planet from a long time ago in a galaxy far away. So can we still visit this isolated desert town? Yeah, but would you want to? Well, if you do, then you'd best be prepared. Caution is paramount in Cooper Pedy, where treacherous pits and caverns pockmark the landscape in search of opal riches. Moving on to number 7, Omiya Khan, Russia. Deep in the cold, ominous heart of Siberia lies Omiya Khan, a village shrouded in frigid legend as the coldest permanently inhabited place on Earth. Situated just a stone's throw from the Arctic Circle, with temperatures plunging to record lows of negative 96 degrees Fahrenheit, survival in this icy enclave begs the question of both why and how its citizens endure. With daylight oscillating from a mere three hours in winter to a bountiful 21 hours in summer, and the ground perpetually encased in frozen slumber by the subarctic climate, Omiyakan's approximately 500 souls face formidable challenges. Agriculture here is a pipe dream, leaving reindeer and horse meat as dietary staples. While southern kids revel in snow days, Omiya Khan's youth are tethered to classrooms unless temperatures plummet below negative 61 degrees Fahrenheit. A mere minute of exposure on an average day can spell a frosty demise here. But beyond all the hardships, the village's bone-chilling temperatures necessitated a stripped-down existence bereft of modern comforts. Cars groan to life with frozen axle grease, pipes succumb to icid rigidity within hours, and batteries surrender their charge at an alarming haste. Even humble pen ink freezes. When engines freeze, it means many cars are left running all the time, and face coverings are a must as eyelashes and even saliva freeze in an instant. The nearest city is Yakutsk, which is an incredibly long 576 miles away. That constant layer of permafrost makes life hard for the locals and prevents farming as nothing can penetrate the hard ground. Most residents live off high-protein foods including frozen raw fish, reindeer meat, and ice cubes of horse blood to get their nutrients. There are no conveniences in town due to the remote location, so if you plan on visiting, you better pack a jacket and some long johns. Number 6. Kiruna, Sweden just a hundred miles shy of the Arctic Circle lies Karuna, Sweden's northernmost city. 
This remote outpost situated adjacent to an iron mine, having over a century of prosperity, faces a unique challenge. The monumental task of relocating its residents and entire infrastructure to accommodate ongoing mining operations. At the heart of this is a state-owned company responsible for mining approximately 78% of all iron ore within the EU. The Karuna Mine, the world's largest underground iron ore mine, is vital to its operations, yet its ore body slopes directly beneath the city. To ensure the mine's continued operation, significant portions of Karuna must be relocated. A monumental undertaking, this $1.5 billion project entails the dismantling and relocation of 3,200 homes, 21 heritage buildings, the entire commercial center, and key infrastructure. By 2035, an estimated 6,000 residents, comprising two-thirds of the city's population, will have transitioned into new surroundings. Well, despite the enormity of the task, the relocation project presents a unique opportunity, rectifying shortcomings dating back to the 1960s and 70s. Leading the charge in this transformative endeavor is Volvo, a major player in northern Sweden's construction equipment market. Leveraging its expertise and resources, Volvo is spearheading the construction of Karuna's new city center, laying the foundations for a future that seamlessly integrates the city's heritage with modern amenities. Number 5. Norilsk, Russia in the icy heart of Siberia, we have Norilsk, a city so cold and isolated it could make your teeth chatter just by thinking about it. Winter here isn't just a season, it's a relentless force that blankets the city in darkness and snow for a staggering 270 days a year. And just when you think it can't get any worse, imagine not seeing the sun until mid-January. When temperatures here plummet to bone-chilling lows of negative 78 degrees Fahrenheit during the coldest snaps, the city wears its title as one of the chilliest places on Earth with a certain grim pride. But hey, who's counting when you got snowstorms pounding the streets one day out of every three? Isolation? Yep, check. Nestled 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle, it stands as a testament to human resilience in the face of the wilderness. With no roads leading in or out, reaching this frigid outpost involves either a plane ride or a boat journey. No wonder locals jokingly refer to the rest of Russia as the mainland from their icy perch. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom here. Despite its frosty exterior, the city's got a surprisingly lively scene with public transportation, bars, cafes, churches, and even some art galleries. And who could forget the thriving theater scene? It is kind of like a winter wonderland, but with a side of culture. Well, now let's talk about money. It's not just freezing, it's rolling in the dough. Sitting atop a vast nickel, platinum, and palladium deposits, this city is a gold mine. Well, more like a platinum mine. Thanks to Norilsk Nickel, which controls much of the mining activity, the city rakes in a hefty chunk of Russia's GDP. Of course, there's a catch. Mining comes at a price, and in this case, it's pollution. Sulfur dioxide chokes the air, vegetation withers for miles around, and rivers turn blood red, all in the name of progress. But hey, when you're living in a city built on the backs of prisoners and their descendants, you learn to take the good with the bad. Number 4. Tristan da Cunha Picture traveling the boundless expanse of the South Atlantic Ocean, where the horizon stretches endlessly in all directions. Amid this vast sea lies a small volcanic island, its emerald green landscape punctuated by a humble abodes and structures, a solitary haven of humanity in a realm of solitude. Welcome to Tristan da Cunha, home to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, an enclave which stands as the most isolated settlement on Earth. Named after the Portuguese explorer Tristan da Cunha, who stumbled upon this remote island in the 16th century, this archipelago later became a British possession out of fears that Napoleon might seek refuge here. Well, since then, Tristan da Cunha has woven its own narrative of resilience and survival amidst the relentless isolation. The island's history mirrors the tumultuous nature of its terrain, from thwarted colonization attempts by American whalers to the decline of the whaling industry. It's weathered numerous storms, yet through it all, its inhabitants have persevered, adapting to the challenges of their remote existence with remarkable ingenuity. But amid the simplicity lies a profound sense of peace and community. Despite the looming threat of an active volcano, which last erupted in 1961, life here exudes serenity. Islanders, deeply connected to their homeland, weathered the storm of evacuation only to return when the coast was clear. For them, Tristan da Cunha isn't just a place to live, it's a way of life. And a fun fact about the island, no citizen has ever been arrested by a police officer, ever. 
Tristan da Cunha English, known locally as Tristanian, is the language spoken on the isolated island nestled in the South Atlantic, and this stands as the tiniest and most secluded native English-speaking community worldwide, representing a variant of South Atlantic English. It bears resemblances to St. Helen English. As the world rushes forward, this place remains steadfast, a bastion of simplicity in an increasingly complex world. Its isolation may be a challenge, but it's also its greatest strength, a reminder that even in the most remote corners of the earth, hope endures and the human spirit prevails. And yeah, despite it all, there's still radio and television there too. Number 3. Villa Las Estrellas, Antarctica Villa Las Estrellas, located in the Chilean Antarctic Territory, is a small civilian settlement and research station situated on King George Island, part of the South Shetland Island Archipelago. As one of the only civilian towns in Antarctica, Villa Las Estrellas serves as a home to the families and support staff of the nearby research base. This is a younger entry to the world of remote outposts. This cold Chilean outpost was established in 1984. The settlement is equipped with basic infrastructure, including residential buildings, a school, post office, and a small hospital, plus a bank, which caters to the basic everyday needs of the residents. But just because you can live somewhere doesn't always mean that you should, and Las Estrellas has garnered a reputation of being one of the most extreme and inhospitable environments on Earth. During the dark, long winters, which last from May to December, residents can expect to live in a world that exists well below zero. Add in whipping winds to those bone-chilling temps and an absence of sunlight, and you're looking at one of the toughest places to live. And yet, people are here. The population, with approximately 80 to 150 people residing in the settlement during the summer months, research activities are at their peak. The residents, including support staff and their families, come from various backgrounds and nationalities, meaning a multicultural and diverse community thrives here. Access to the outpost is primarily facilitated through air and sea transport, with regular flights and occasional maritime services connecting the settlement to mainland Chile and other research stations in the region. Number 2. Longyearbyen the Norwegian town of Longyearbyen is actually closer to the North Pole than it is to the capital city of Oslo. The Arctic location makes it super cold throughout the year, and during the winter the town sees long stretches of unbroken darkness. To avoid collapse when the ice beneath them starts melting, all houses in the city are built on stilts. Longyearbyen has 3,000 inhabitants, and approximately one-third of them are foreigners, and it's a region that still sees a decent amount of tourism throughout the year. And with such a small population, it should come as no surprise that there's an impressively low crime rate. But part of that fact is because it's illegal to live here without a job or a permanent address. But that isn't the only unique law here in the remote town of Longyearbyen. Some of these laws include a ban on cats, a restriction on how much alcohol an individual can purchase on a monthly basis, and a requirement that any individuals venturing outside carry a rifle for protection against polar bears. And while it's not illegal to die here, the law states that no one is buried here because it's so cold that it's physically impossible for the body to decompose. So while ashes may be spread with the local government's approval, the recently deceased and terminally ill must be taken to the mainland. The decision to disallow burials came in 1950, when it was discovered that the bodies of residents who had died as a result of the 1918 pandemic had not begun to decompose. Today, though, scientists fear that the corpses have been preserved by the permafrost in which they were buried. They may still contain live strains of that same virus that killed 5% of the world's population. Well, Long Year BN may sound like the setting of a science fiction film, but it's very real and very interesting. Speaking of science fiction, though, it's also home to the Svalbard Seed Bank. The purpose of that bank is to safeguard the world's crop diversity by storing duplicate samples of seeds from gene banks worldwide. It sort of serves as a fail-safe backup in case a natural or human-made disaster, providing a vital resource for agricultural sustainability and food security globally. You gotta love Long Year BN. Number 1. Itokortumit, Greenland Nestled in the frozen embrace of Greenland's eastern expanse lies Itokortumit, a settlement as remote as it is captivating. With winters stretching for nine months of the year and flanked by the grandeur of the world's largest national park and longest fjord system, this tiny outpost offers a breathtaking backdrop that defies your imagination. Formerly known as Scoresbysund, the settlement's name pays homage to the English Arctic explorer William Scoresby, who charted the region in 1882. Yet its current moniker, Itokortumit, meaning Big House Dwellers in Eastern Greenlandic, speaks to its indigenous heritage. 
Founded in 1925 by Einar Mikkelsen and a band of 80 Inuit settlers, this place emerged as a beacon of hope amidst the vast wilderness of northeastern Greenland. Encouraged by Danish colonial interests, the settlers sought a new beginning, drawn by the promise of abundant wildlife and fertile hunting grounds. But its history stretches far beyond its colonial inception. Ruins and archaeological remnants bear witness to a rich Inuit heritage that once thrived in these rugged environments. Today, it remains a bastion of solitude. Wednesdays bring the promise of connections as planes from West Greenland touch down, ferrying supplies and visitors to this remote enclave. Alternatively, intrepid travelers may opt for the sea route, navigating the icy waters to reach the town's welcoming shores. Yet, despite its isolation, Itokortumit pulsates with life, offering a myriad of adventures for the intrepid explorer. Nanu Travel stands ready to orchestrate a symphony of experiences, from dog sledding and kayaking to hiking and hunting. However, the economic landscape is not without its challenges. While the surrounding waters teem with shrimp and Greenland halibut, the encroaching sea ice poses a formidable barrier to year-round exploitation. In contrast, tourism emerges as a burgeoning force, drawing researchers and adventurers alike to its icy embrace. As the closest town in Greenland to Iceland, its allure lies in this pristine ecosystem. Rich cultural tapestry and unparalleled remoteness, Nanu's travel guest house, featured prominently in the hashtag RemoteAF campaign by Hotels.com, serves as a gateway to this frozen paradise. Moreover, the abandoned settlement of Unartek, a mere 4.3 miles south of Itokortumit, stands as a poignant reminder of the region's storied past. Its weathered buildings serve as a testament to human resilience, offering shelter and solace to those who tread its frozen paths. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.